what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. I'm here with a Novo tutorial. Today we're going to just quickly go over how to assign parameters and effects to the macro control, which is this beautiful spinning orb in the middle of Novo. Any assignable parameters will have the up and down arrows next to them, which you can then click and drag up or down. For example, most of the performance combos come with panning already assigned to the macro control. So when the Macro controls all the way to the left. The panning's in the center here for the bank two and bank three. But if I pull it up, you can see that this panning gets spread out and bank two is a little bit to the right and bank three is a little bit to the left. A little bit of boost in volume there on bank three as well. Let's say I wanted to bank it a little bit less. All I need to do is click on these arrows and drag up. And now it's a little bit less. If I wanna invert the direction of the modulation or of the automation, just keep going right past that center point, and there we go. Now that tick is in fact the center point, so let's say I wanna start on the left about 50% and then go into center, that's how you would do that. It's gonna be the same thing as it was before. Now it's gonna start a little bit panned and then end up at center. So those are just some quick things to know about. However, the real goodies start when you start adding your filtering and your effects to the macro control and then using the macro sequencer. But let's just go ahead and map some, maybe some filtering and some of these effects. The first thing you need to do is turn on whatever you want to be mapped to the macro control by clicking the on button. Then if you want to edit those, you need to click the title, which will bring it to its page. Now for the filter, for example, we can control channel one, channel two, channel three independently, or we can link them all together and control all three of them in the same fashion. What we're gonna do is actually control channel one and channel two differently while leaving three pretty much as is. So we have another power button right now and we need to go ahead and turn that on. And the reason why there are two, let's say I wanted to use the filtering system but not have it be controlled by the macro control. I could just turn that macro control off and now I can still use this control system right here. So that's just something to think about. Now, my plan here is to have the low end kind of filtered off on a high shelf and then come in full towards all the way right. So what I'm gonna do is actually start with the macro control all the way left and then see what we can do in terms of filtering. Best thing to do while you're doing this is to solo whatever you're working on, especially if you're doing one thing at a time, just so you can get a better understanding of what's happening and then A, B it in the context of everything together. So you can see right now, we're actually automating in the wrong direction. So again, like I said before, we're gonna take these arrows and pull all the way up. And I'm actually gonna pull it down even more. And make sure it goes all the way to the top so it's completely opened up there when it's all the way over to the right on the macro control. Sweet. Next thing we're gonna do is jump into channel two. Again, turn it on, and we're gonna go ahead and use a little pass filter as well. And let's go ahead and solo that to see what we have. And that sounds pretty good. And when it's all the way over, I want it to be all the way open again. And for now, let's just go ahead and leave channel three alone and jump over to the space effects, which is gonna be the reverb and the delay. Turn it on, and let's go ahead and affect channel one, channel two. Channel three, we'll turn the reverb on just a little bit. Something like that sounds pretty good. I don't think it needs any delay. Let's go over to channel two, reverb. And I like that it's gonna start really wet and then go into dry. So let's go ahead and see what that sounds like. Let's go ahead and solo that actually. Mm -hmm. 
turn on the delay. And again, I want it to be pretty much dry by the time it gets all the way over to the right on the macro control. So do something like this. Cool. And channel one, I'm gonna do something pretty much the same, turn that reverb on. I want it to be dry by the time it gets all the way over. A little bit less because it's that real low end. Same with the delay, just a little bit of delay, and we gotta make sure we can hear it. Cool. So now let's listen to everything together and bring the macro control from its default position to all the way open. Do a little bit of mixing. I really don't want the high ambience to get louder. I'm actually going to pull it down maybe a little bit louder, but not that much, and actually pull its overall volume down just a tad. I do want the motif to get louder over time. There we go. And you know what we're going to do is just go ahead and set up a macro sequence so I don't have to keep clicking and dragging because I actually have to like click twice to get it from one side to the other. So the way to do that is just to come into the macro sequencer turn it on and what we can do is just go ahead and make a simple one triangle sequence make sure infinity is on just go ahead and press the key now and you'll notice that it's the range is actually not quite that good so what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and move it like that yeah okay and you'll notice that right now it's not going all the way to the bottom and that's because the knob isn't all the way open so what i need to do is actually click and drag it up this is a good way to set how far the automation will go as you can see this length also corresponds to the length of the automation on these effects so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and open it up completely <laughs> So that sounds really good and obviously it could be a lot better but we're kind of pressed for time we're passing 10 minutes on the tutorial but one thing that's really cool about the macro sequencer is let's say I'm using this for a performance or I'm using this for my track and after I have that washed out filtered intro I want it just to go in and be a steady uh, no macro control movement or anything like that beyond the loops themselves. I want it just to be flatlined. And the cool thing about this is you can just click down here from infinity to one time. And now as you hold your key, the automation will happen once. And whatever value is the last value of the step sequencer here is where the the values will stay for everything you have mapped to the macro control. So what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and go down. So what I want to happen is to start here and then come all the way down. And then when it's down here, be let it be completely unfiltered, unaffected, and just have it be at its base settings, which is the last setting over here on this step. See, that's exactly what happened. If we wanted to come over a longer period of time, we could just use the length knob right here. Right now it's on 36, but we can go up to 64. Again, just come in here and it's just gonna give you that nice slope. The rate, we can actually make it even longer if we wanted to, or faster, we can go up down to a quarter, I think up to a 64th, yeah. So right now, these are really short steps. And right here, these are actually much longer steps. So the period of time it's gonna to take to go from fully open to completely closed is much longer. There's also the smoothing knob, which is gonna be uh, the transition from here to here will be smoothed out 
algorithmically as opposed to just step by step where you can get more of a stuttering effect. It depends on what you want. Let's go ahead and smooth it all the way up. Let's go ahead and check out what we have. So that sounds really great. One other thing that's really cool is not that we have everything mapped and we have things sounding the way we want it, but we want to audition different samples. We can do that simply by clicking and changing the banks. For example, we can go, let's go mid rhythmic here and high, high motif, for example. And now if we play these samples together, they're actually going to be automated the same way as we just set up before. So you can get the idea there. I'm going to go ahead and turn the length down so we don't have to sit through that whole thing every time. So as you can see, not only is there no way to mess up these sounds because the loops are just so good, but you can get some really, 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 really top quality sounds coming out of this thing and actually really easily. That's the loop designer. I got more tutorials coming for some of the traditional strings as well as the string designer. So make sure you're subscribed, you know, give it a thumbs up if you like the video and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.